you want to become a blockchain developer and you have no idea where to start, I'm going to tell you one thing I didn't know either. The first thing that you have to do in order for you to become a blockchain developer is understand that it's not going to take you six months. It's going to take you a lot of time. You have to spend nights, you have to spend weekends learning and mastering a technology. It's not going to be an overnight thing. It's not going to be something that you are going to be able to do overnight. I've been learning blockchain for the past three years and I still think and I still see myself learning and mastering blockchain for three more years. I, I'm going to set a real an honest expectation to become a blockchain developer. Three, four years. Why? Why am I giving you this number? Because the field of blockchain is constantly changing. This is an evolving technology. It's not a technology that has mature to understand what we need to learn to become proficient. Let me put it this way. You know in blockchain, when we execute transactions, let's for example take Ethereum. If I want to execute a transaction on the blockchain, I will be paying gas fees. The cost that it's going to incur if I need to store data on the blockchain or if I need to execute a function, any function that is going to trigger data storage, it's going to incur in gas fees. But now we are starting to see something hitting a mainstream blockchain and that is the zero knowledge proof, right? With zero knowledge proof, I can effectively pre-authorize a transaction and not even pay gas fees. The fees are gonna be very low, right? So I'm giving you this as an example. Now that I know that with zero knowledge proof, I don't necessarily have to incur in gas fees, at least initially on a transaction. That means that what I learned or what I knew about blockchain and how transaction our process and the gas fee and all that could go away, which means that if I spent two years learning how to improve gas fees and make sure that the code has been set in a way that is more efficient, if the technology has improved and that no longer is relevant, that has become obsolete, well, the entire time that I spend learning that, it's obsolete. It's not necessarily a lot, but it's obsolete from an application perspective. I no longer need to do that. Now there's a improved method of doing that. So my point is, in blockchain, things are changing, things are improving, which means that what you learn today could be irrelevant in two or three months, right? But I always think that there's no such thing as losing knowledge. You always improve knowledge, you never lose knowledge, or you never lose the value of something that you obtain through knowledge, through education. You probably have to improve it. You probably have to append more disciplines on something that you already knew, okay? Blockchain is constantly changing, which means that you constantly have to keep up with the space. You have to constantly keep up learning and adapting and obtaining more information and making sure that you can use that information to build applications and to make the code more resilient and more improved, all right? I am not going to tell you that there's a secret sauce for all this because there's not a secret sauce. There's always room for improvement, okay? So, number two, you are set to experience a lot of negativity and a lot of criticism. Okay, so that is number two. Number two, you are definitely gonna experience a lot of negativity, a lot of criticism. You are going to be experiencing criticism from people that don't understand the technology. They, they think that you're selling smoke, that you're just scamming people. That definitely is, is very common. Also, you are going to be experiencing a lot of negativity because you wrote a code, right? and the code was better because the language that you wrote that code is still in development. It's not production ready. It's something that was in beta, but then you had clients that wanted to implement that particular solution, let's say NFTs, right? But it turns out you wrote code for a smart contract and there is a vulnerability in the code. There's an exploit on the code. You were not aware of that. Your intentions were not to compromise the user, right? To, compromise the code because you were not aware of code security flaws, which means that you couldn't launch a project or a client and it turns out there was a security exploit in the contract that you implemented, but you were not aware that there was a security flaw because it was recently discovered. Now it's being exploited in the wild and your client got compromised 
what do you think is the client gonna think? What do you think the client is going to tell you when they suffer the exploit? It's your fault. You should have caught this. You should have seen this coming. You didn't know. You don't know what you're doing and stuff like that. And it's very hard for us as developers to come up with an answer to that. You had the best intentions. You did the code in a way that you knew that it was not going to affect the client, but you have no control over security exploits. It's a code that is still in beta. It's still been improved, which means that the client has to understand that they are getting into risky technology by adopting blockchain, right? So that will be number two. You are going to be experiencing a lot of criticism, a lot of pushback from people, and even stuff that is not in your control, you will have to figure out and come up with a solution, right? I personally think the following. If I know that I am going to be selling something, I am going to be offering my skill in a technology that is not yet secured to the point that is safely set for production release, I have to set those expectations clear with the customer. Either we have to put a disclaimer to tell the end client. So you have to set those expectations to the client. You have to have the mental strength to endure that kind of thing, okay?